describe what two populations you're dealing with? Three populations. Three populations. Oh yeah, you got protective custody. Yeah, we have protective custody over here. Uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we actually have three different units in this building. It's the only building on the uh, facility like this. We have the juveniles, we have protective custody, and the general population. Uh, and they all have to remain segregated from each other. It gets kind of be a zoo or a circus up here sometimes because we have to maintain the security of the juveniles, the protection of those, and then our workers. And for obvious reasons, they can't be intermingled. So. And so you're actually controlling the door, doors opening and closing and all access, if you could describe that, sort of, generally speaking? <laughs> push a button, the door opens. I don't open it unless there's an authorized entry. And that's the, that's the uh, entire, entire synopsis. Just opened it. One, six. Doors on the left are secure now, stand clear. Obviously we have to be careful not to close anybody in. And some of them don't make it easy. They like to test. Yes, they do. And I heard you say uh, 10 seconds on the left earlier, or 10 seconds on the right? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I try and give them more. Oh, she's on the bottom. Um, I try and give them a warning so that nobody is standing in the door and they know what's coming. They like consistency. Um, if you have a, do, you guys, do you call them code greens in this facility, or if you have an incident and you have to put things on lockdown, what's Thing, we don't we don't have a code anything like that. Uh, the only code we have is a code red Bravo, which is normally an extraction in the SHU or CCU. Uh, lockdowns are all mandated by our administration, our shift supervisors. We have a yard. David. You signal at your back window. Ten Complete loss of train of thought. Uh, we have, if we have a fight, um, typically the wing will be locked down immediately. A uh, continuation of a lockdown will come from someone like Miss Doherty over here or our shift supervisor. And once we have the situation contained, depending on the situation, we either let them back up or keep them down. Uh, a lot depends if there's a weapon involved, if there's just two guys having it out. So. You never know. You never know until it actually happens what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Do you ever have guys uh, that when they age out of the juvenile side will just transfer right over here? So yeah, we have. We have uh, two or three on the right side that came from the left. We've got trying to watch what's going on.
that's what the mirrors are for. Once they graduate out, it's determined by classifications, where they go, where they qualify to go. If they've been a problem child, it's unlikely that they'd go to a regular general population. Uh, David T. Ratbardo. But classification will determine where they go due to due to their conduct and behavior. For me as an intake officer, communication is probably one of the most important skills that an individual can have in this department. A lot of times these kids when they come in don't have that level of communication with their own family. I think it's very important, imperative that each and every one of the intake officers, including me, when we have the opportunity to talk with the kid to find out what's going on, that you use proper communication, uh, clear sentences, you let them know where you're coming from, you let them know how you're not here to judge them, you're not here to punish them, you're just pretty much here to find out what their story is and if we can fill any gaps in that we can notify the judge, probation department of what exactly is going on and the only way to do that is to ask questions, not necessarily about their charge because we cannot ask why they committed their delinquent act, but we can ask about their family life, their schooling, their peer situation, um, if they have additional people living in the home that sometimes causes tension, it gives us a good, you know, idea of what's going on. And do you have any sort of communicative, uh, I don't want to say strategies or whatever, but if a, if a kid, a juvenile, isn't speaking much, do you try to get them talking more? I, I know I do. I can't speak for every, you know, because again, every intake officer does have their own style, but from what I witness from my intake officers, if you see somebody is agitated, you try to remove that agitation because a lot of times it's just a defense mechanism. They're nervous, they're scared, you know, a lot of times it's an act. So if you let them know right off the bat, you know, we did not bring you here. You know, the police department brought you here and, and we have a job to find out what is going on with you. We're not going to hurt you. We're not going to punish you. You're not going to get, you know, slapped, beat cussed at, you know, we're going to talk human to human and, and try to find out who you are and where you're going and why you're sitting in front of me right now. Um. When you have the repeat offenders, yes, you messed up. Again, you, obviously you, you made a choice, you made a decision to get into trouble and here you are again. But the other factor to that that a lot of people do not see, a lot, a lot the public does not see it, is, is the home life is so, you know, different from what I think a lot of people are used to. You know, you have like this picket, you know, white fence in your head and you think it's gonna be a certain way and what these kids are going through in their home life, you know, is not always positive. So to expect for them to listen to me when I tell them, look, you gotta stay in school, make sure you listen to your mom, you know, all that is words. But when you get into that actual environment, I think a lot of times the kids want to do good, they want to follow that. But depending on how their home life is set up, how their neighborhood is set up, you know, the types of individuals that come in, you know, in and out, the drug dealing, the gang banging, it, it's very difficult for even the most strongest child to maintain and, and rise above and, and go to a positive path. And whenever I see a kid is a few months shy of turning 18 and they have substance abuse issues, they're still not enrolled in school, they're having issues, you know, at home or in their neighborhood, um, 
I have to tell the reality of it. The reality is when they turn 18, the system is not going to care anymore. The services that the juvenile court offers will be done. You will not be, you know, coddled. You won't be held by your hand to make sure that you do your substance abuse program or that you do your family counseling or that you take your medication. You know, all of that, you know, is done and over. The adult system will not coddle you. They will not make sure that you you get your um, substance abuse programs. They'll tell you where they are, but as far as following and making sure, no, you're an adult. They feel that that is your responsibility. So when these kids turn 18, if they don't take advantage prior to turning 18 to the services that this court offers, they're screwed. And I know that sounds very cold, you know, but realistically that's the way it is. They will only be a number across the street. Well, it looks like he's tore up some of his uh, um, scrubs that they wear. It looks like maybe he's trying to make a rope of some sort or something, so he can um, use that to, you know, throw a little fit or whatever he does. When you see one of the offenders doing something like that, would you Question about it, or just kind of keep an eye on there. Have him go over there. He's getting rid of it. He's flushing down the toilet. <laughs> Hey, Officer Daly. <laughs> Officer da Daly, 44. Signal eight B three control, please. He needs to shut Hancock's water off. He's making a rope with his orange stuff and he's flushing down the toilet.
Yeah, he got 12. I'm just waiting on one. How much money you got, Houston? He, he was the last one to get his tray, so he's finishing up his food. Yeah. Now, they're shut off his water, but he's got a rope in his room. It's probably about four and a half, five feet long. So he's yeah. working on tearing apart and getting rid of. Thing is, this is a recurrent thing with him. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to stand there and go into his room and rip it out because then he'll start cutting on himself, scratching his face, tearing up his lights, tearing everything else up. This is just a reoccurring thing. So. If he's getting rid of it, that's fine. Because he'll go out for a wreck tomorrow or today. As soon as he does, I'll just strip everything out of his room. You might be a little crappy than uh, off the table and shut off the water, but. He'll get over it. Yeah. You said place him on wreck restriction for today? 35 from water back to AO. Can't take a wreck away from him for flushing. Everything else, Bob? Anything else is good? Go to floor camera. Four? Yeah. Which one? One through twelve? Yeah. Click on room five. Fifty-five, one take three, two twenty. Who's this? Alright. Slater. Oops. Slater. You guy? The name yeah. sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, the kids from NAP are getting released today. They just put pains. How many? Two. Who are they? Uh, the ones they had problems with. Um, remember with Herd and everybody else? They cut them loose. They're part of his group and... Hancock's always my dark horse down here. Man, over here, so. he, he, he's been actually behaving himself. He has. Except he assaulted Winfrey. Sure. So you were saying this this young man in B four. Mm-hmm. Um, are you the strip salad? Hancock. Hancock's an attention getter. He does this a lot. Thirty five. I have three J threes. That's that's all the offender well, does. He just he draws attention, and the more attention you give him, it's like a fire. So if you just ignore him, leave him bound, he burns himself out, and he he just. He has to have attention. If you give him attention, he gets worse. So if we just ignore it, monitor him from in here, which is what we're doing, and give him, you know, a chance to calm down himself instead of agitating and making the system worse. So how do you establish that line between it's, it's working it's working with him on a daily basis. Um, every person isn't the same. I mean you can stand there and have a little cookbook about them and they're all different but each person has their own reactions their own you know pressure points or their own ways of you know working and dealing with things certain people they need attention certain people don't want attention at all certain people just you know have to cause commotion they don't mean anything by it you take things with a grain of salt down here you got to have thick skin um, you have tons of people that come from different nationality different homes different family styles lives and one person stands there expresses his behavior different than 
the person that is quiet all the time. But still, you got to treat each one of them with caution, you know, because they are inmates and they are locked up down here. So security factors first, and then everything else comes second. How about the shift picture in here? This is not the best. Not the best. Okay, we'll choose a different type. Oh, I didn't think. Oh, we I got turn. lights. Oh, thank you. I thought we weren't supposed to turn it on, but you're the security. Thank you. Is that better? Oh yes. You know, if, I, if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to scrub, continue asking any questions. If we've got a question. Yeah. Staff, hold on a moment. Prepare for count. Walk control. Please advise when all officers are clear. Walk control. Please advise when all officers are clear. Yeah. Okay, Jack. Mm-hmm. A lot better than when he first came here. They would like them to open 14. Can you add open 14, please? Wait, who wanted 14 open? Our crew, I guess. Well, who's in there? Tigers. Wait, is there an offender in there? Or? Okay. 38. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk to you a little more okay. later on. All right. We can turn the lights down. Thank you. I need out. Thank you, be advised. You have three to three to one. Be advised when those days are secure and safety. 3831, did you need assistance? 